Hello. My name is Pastor Pete. I serve the First United Methodist Church here in Brookings. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus and thank you for joining us tonight in this midweek service. I see this as an opportunity to draw breath in the middle of the week. You've kind of made it through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but you need courage to get through to the weekend. We have been reading from the prayer book of the Bible, from the book of Psalms. And this series that we are following on a Wednesday night is called Psalms for a Pandemic, because many of the great biblical psalms were written in really difficult moments. And as we revisit these psalms for difficult moments, they literally feel like they could have been written for today, as you and I struggle with the unknown, struggle with the difficulty of a virus that has so colonized our lives and taken all our answers away from us. Tonight's psalm is no different. In a moment, we're going to look at Psalm 42. So if you don't have your Bible, I would suggest you go and find your Bible. It's really nice to have the text in front that you can follow with me. But first, let us pray together. O oh God, beyond description, you are like the wind in the trees. We can see you at work, but we cannot grasp the size and the shape of you. O oh God, we thank you for today, for new opportunities to live life and to love the people around us. Thank you for food, for clothing, for a roof over our heads, for people to love and for people who love us. Help us in our time together tonight. Breathe your Holy Spirit into the words that we read, that we may have courage for life. Teach us, O Holy Spirit, how to hear you in this time we spend together. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So have you got your Bible? Psalm 42. Entitled to the choir master, a mescal of the sons of Korah. It's literally, he has a song for the, the male voice choir of the sons of Korah. Psalm 42, and I'll start reading at verse 1. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with deadly wounds in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? 
Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Our text for today, Psalm 42, and you can actually take your pick, either verse 5 or verse 11, because they are a repeat of one another. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. And we give thanks to God for the scriptures that have been passed down to us and for the way they have given courage to many generations. So tell me, how was your day? Today has seen a hot, humid, thirsty-making wind blowing. And I'm sitting here wondering, have you ever been thirsty? And I'm not just talking about feeling like some mid-afternoon drink, but more like spending all day outside in this hot, humid weather without anything to drink, where you are really, really thirsty which is the beginning place of this psalm. The writer of the psalm sees a deer that is desperately thirsty, going in search of a flowing stream of water to quench its thirst. And the writer immediately identifies the thirst. This is not just a simple thirst for water, but rather the deep inner spiritual thirstiness. Psalm 42, the first two verses. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. So here's someone who's praying, but feels like his faith is a struggle. He continues, verse 3. My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? So, so the psalmist reduced to tears, not only feeling spiritually dry, but wounded because people are taunting the apparent absence of God in the life of the one who wrote this psalm. And then verse 4, the remembrance that, in fact, I used to be a worship leader how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise. Here the psalmist, completely downcast. People are saying, God has abandoned you. The writer, feeling like I'm on my own. 42 verse 5, why are you cast down my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Why are you cast down, my soul? I wonder if that's familiar for anyone who is watching. Have you felt like you struggle so much that even your soul is broken? Perhaps you used to be on fire for Jesus, but you've grown cynical and weary. Maybe you feel that thirst gnawing away at the edges of your soul. I do think it's particularly true right now that this COVID-19 virus has frustrated all of us. Many people have spoken of being separated from those they love and being unable to do the things that they love doing. Particularly here in the US, this is summer. You should be doing all the summer things, going to the music festivals, being outdoors, and constantly worrying about where is the virus. People have become angry with being told what to do or how to behave. And quite frankly, we're seeing some people behaving really, really badly. People have lost money and lost work, and some have lost the courage to continue. And maybe you 
have been tempted to wonder if your struggling soul is a sign that God has abandoned you. Let me point out that none of us are alone in this. This is literally the moment for us to go to the life of Jesus and discover that Jesus felt exactly the same thing. There's a moment in the life of Jesus when it seems as if he is completely overwhelmed by his struggles. He's been betrayed by one of his students. He's had his best friend deny that he even knows him. He is tried unjustly and then suffers the death sentence of an innocent person. And it's at this point, the moment of Jesus' deepest despair, that we hear Jesus from the cross saying the words of the psalmist. From the cross we hear Jesus saying, I am thirsty. Which is more than just being physically thirsty. It's literally the reflection of the words in the psalm, my soul pants for you, O God, like a thirsty deer longs for running water. And at this point, our theological understanding of thirstiness is literally turned on its head. You see, a thirsty soul is not the sign of the absence of God. A thirsty soul is not a sign that somehow we've lost track of our faith or lost our grip on God. The fact is, our inner thirst does not come from our own effort. It is the Spirit of God at work in us that prompts us to see our thirst. When we go back to the story of Jesus on the cross, we are told that immediately, this is in John's Gospel, immediately after speaking his thirst, immediately after saying, I'm thirsty, the next words that Jesus speaks are, it is finished. He is able to complete his task because God is with him. Because God is with Jesus in the place of his thirst, I am thirsty, Jesus finishes the task he is given. Tetelestai, a word that is familiar at Easter time. I have finished that which you have given me to do, which is the way our faith is. We we don't begin to serve God from places of comfort and ease. We serve God best from those places of discomfort, from the thirsty places in our lives. To go back to Psalm 42, once the writer of the psalm speaks of how uncomfortable this thirsty life is, We then read from verse 6, Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon and Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. Do you hear? I, I hear the water. My thirsty soul is being nourished. All your breakers, all your waves have gone over me. My thirstiness has been satisfied. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. It is in the place of discomfort, the place where the psalmist is most thirsty, that that God is discovered. The, The song of the Lord is with me. The love of the Lord surrounds me. The breakers of the Lord wash over me. The waterfall of the Lord nourishes my thirst and so the last three verses recap the prayerful discovery when i'm struggling in my difficult position when it feels like my enemies are mocking me when my soul is struggling then look for god at work to go back to our text why are you cast down O my soul why are you in turmoil within me hope in God for I shall again praise him my salvation and my God 
in that place of greatest discomfort, that place of greatest thirst, you will discover God at work. So let me tell you a story from my life, a story that ironically hooks into this psalm. Many years ago, I, I come from South Africa. I um, come from a turbulent history in our country. And there was a time where I was part of a, a group of pastors working in a rural area. And we had covenanted together that we would help each other in a country that at that time had laws, laws that said white pastors shall work with white church members and black pastors will work with black church members. And my black colleague had gone away on some leave and had asked me to look after his congregation in what was a racially segregated town. We had a black section and a white section. And so I was on my way to take a funeral so you had this white pastor who was going to take a funeral in a black area. And I was intercepted by the police who told me that it was against the law to do so. And when I insisted, I pointed out to him that I was a pastor to all God's people and, and he could not decide who God had called me to pastor. He literally wrote out an order forbidding me from going to the church that I was looking after. Um, without getting into too much stuff. The upshot was that I was arrested for disobeying his order. And I sat in prison and I was angry. I, I was angry that I, that I couldn't go and take the funeral that I should be taking. And I was angry with God for not looking after me. And in the midst of that, I came across Psalm 42. And what leapt out at me was this one line in Psalm 42 where the psalmist says, I used to lead the people in worship. And, and I sat in that prison cell saying, yes, exactly. I should be leading the people in worship. And why aren't you with me? And in that moment, in that, in that moment, I actually sensed the presence of God saying, I'm with you. I have not gone anywhere else. And although you might not be leading the worship of the people, I am right here with you. And, and from that moment, the, the moment of my greatest thirstiness, my, my greatest frustration, I discovered the blessing of God that allowed me to let go of the bitterness, allowed me to engage my jailers who uh, were really puzzled as to why a pastor was in jail and to talk to them about the country we dreamed of, a country where we could all take hands and where, as Christians, we could be one. Um, you see, while I was thinking that I was badly done by, the psalm reminded me, the psalm reminded me, God will wash over you. God will nourish your thirst. Let go of it. And that's what I would bring to us, that God is closest to us in our thirsty moments. The fact is, in our difficult moments, we do have a choice. Either we can complain about how thirsty we are, or we can look to see where God is at work. And so I challenge us in these difficult times, look for God at work. Celebrate what the Lord is doing. Find a song on your lips that you can sing. Uh, I literally have a challenge for you for the next week. I want to challenge you to find a song, a song that you sing each day. Okay, you can sing a new song. Maybe you could sing seven songs over the next seven days. Or you can choose one song and make it your song for the next seven days. There's this amazing musician, Rod King, who's busy singing his way through a song a day. He's nearly at 100. It's amazing. But choose a song, sing a song, and discover God in the midst of your stuff. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to play a song. Um, she's an amazing pianist. She has a lot of fun, and I dare you, sing along with her and enjoy the song. So let's pray together. Lord God, we say thank you. We say thank you that, that in the midst of our difficulties, we can discover you. Help us to complain a little less. 
and to celebrate a little more. We pray your hand upon our families, that in those moments we as a family are thirsty, you nourish us. We pray for our town, asking that in our town where things are difficult, that you grant grace and blessing for the town. This coming weekend, we pray for the United States, a weekend of celebration, asking that everyone might discover their reliance on you. And in our moments of dryness, we might truly, truly discover your blessing and take hands with each other and be able to appreciate one another. And we pray for our world. We believe our world is in your hands and we do ask you to hold our world in your care, to help us figure ways of, of curing, of, of confronting, of healing this virus. But more importantly, find ways of taking hands with each other and being kind and loving and good. So receive our prayers, for we ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so find some joy in this song, a song that talks about the light that Jesus gives us. Sing along, just for a moment, have some joy. So that was fun, wasn't it? Take a song and sing a song this week. I uh, would like to bless you. Before that, I'd like to thank you for financially supporting this church. I have been told by the leaders that traditionally the summer months, the offerings are thin. 
that I must not worry. So I'm not going to worry because I know that you guys are going to faithfully continue to support us. So, receive a blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the fellowship of His Spirit hold us all and go with us through the week. Amen. Good night.